Hello and welcome back to Tools for Sparks, the ultimate YouTube channel for tools for electricians. And today I have got this Weira Torque screwdriver set to show you. Now, if you've been a subscriber to the channel for a long time, or if you subscribe to my Artisan Electrics channel, you'll probably recognize this set. I have posted a previous video about it, but that was quite a short video when I first bought it. And now I want to talk to you really about how I feel about it, having had it for about a year and having used it on a fairly regular basis. So, as I mentioned, this is the Weira Torque screwdriver set, and I'm gonna open it up and show you what's inside. So this is really the main event right here. This is the handle. And as you know, with Weira, they have a lot of these screwdriver sets which have the interchangeable blades. Now, the good thing about this is that you can use your blades from your other uh, Weira screwdriver sets, they will actually fit in this. So if you want to, you can just buy the torque handle and then use the bits from your other screwdriver set and that will save you a bit of money. So that's a good tip for you. Now, there are a few things that I want to bring to your attention about this. I mean, first of all, Weira tools are great quality. Let's let's face it. I mean, I'm not, not going to worry about the quality of this. It is brilliant and as you can see, it's in pretty good condition considering I've had it for about a year. I don't use it that much. It's mainly just when I'm doing consumer unit changes and EICRs, to be honest. Um, so it doesn't get a huge amount of use, but when it does, it really comes in handy. The Newton meter setting or torque setting can be read here. Um, so basically this little arrow there points to the number. And what you do is just pull this down and then you turn the screwdriver and each half turn gives you um, a half, uh, a, a point of, of um, torque. So for example, that now is set to 1.2 Newton meters. That's 1.3. Actually, now I'm ahead of myself there, 1.6, 1.7. 1.8, 1.9, and so on. So it's really easy to change the torque setting. And what happens is once you've got it to the correct torque setting, you've, you know, you're know you using it to tighten up a screw or whatever. When it gets to the limit, it just clicks like that. And you know that you've reached the limit. So it's very easy to know uh, and use. Now the issue that I have with it is that it doesn't actually go up to the correct torque for some circuit breakers or main switches. So the settings on this, it goes from 1.2 Newton meters minimum to three Newton meters maximum. But unfortunately, and many of the consumer units, the main switch torque settings are higher than three Newton meters. So for example, the uh, Hager main switch the torque setting that's required, I believe, is 3.1 or 3.2 Newton meters. And so that means that actually you're never going to quite get up to the tightness that you should have using this Weira torque screwdriver. So some people have mentioned to me that actually the arm egg set, for example, does go up to, I think, 4 Newton meters. So it might be that if you're doing a lot of consumer units with new main switches, you should really get yourself an arm egg set rather than a um, Weira set. Such a shame actually, because it's such a nice set and that's just like the one limitation that kind of means that it's not really good in every circumstance. But for most situations for tightening MCBs, RCBOs, uh, neutral and earth terminals and consumer units, it's absolutely fine. It's just those main switch heavy, high tightness situations where it kind of falls short a little bit. Um, it's got the Newton meter ridge on the end as well, so you can see that on the end. Um, now, a little tip for you as well is that people have told me that you should actually, when you've finished using it, you should always loosen it up to the loosest setting. And the reason for that is that if you leave it on the tightest setting, it keeps the spring tightly coiled, and over time it can actually wear out the spring and cause the settings to become uh, uncalibrated, shall we say. And apparently you can get calibration certificates for these things 
and they sh some people say they should be calibrated every year and stuff like that now i'm not going to get this calibrated i think that's a bit ott to be honest but let me know in the comments if you do get yours calibrated and how much it costs because i imagine it probably costs about half the cost of the flipping screwdriver which is a bit over the top really um but you know i guess if you're using it loads and loads and you're using it on big sites where the torque is like really really important then why not <laughs> uh, yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments in terms of the actual screwdriver bits um, or that come with this they're divided into sort of themes basically sections so you've got your flat screwdrivers here ranging from the uh, 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and the one millimeter so that's measuring the width of the um, the width so the one millimeter is the, like the width of this bit here and then the other measurement like 5.5 .5, is the the width of this part here yeah so five so one mil by 5.5 .5, 0.8 mil by 4 mil 0.6 mil by 3.5 mil and 0.4 mil by 2.5 mil then we've got the um phillips and posi bits here so actually it looks like i'm missing one for some reason maybe not um so you've got basically a ph1 ph uh, pz1 pz2 i think there should be a ph2 in here as well but it's not in there for some reason i'm not sure what happened about that um then here you've got your torque torques with an x so you've got your torques one uh well, torques 10 torques 15 torques 20 and torques 25 or tx 25 so those are our, our um the torques bits there you can see quite nice and come in quite useful in certain situations although to be honest i very rarely use those oh here we go so basically i've just made a little um mistake there i think so there's my ph2 so that's a phillips head size two and then you've got these two which are what's called pz slash s and i'll just zoom in and so you can see those so they are basically a like a pz like a posi drive but they've got this little flat bit here as well which just gives you a bit of extra strength when it comes to for example circuit breakers if you notice a lot of them have the opportunity to use this um, so you get a little slightly better grip on those kind of terminals if you use this pz slash s2 now it depends on the instructions from the manufacturer which one of these you should use and you need to pay careful attention to that when you're before you decide to use a particular one so for example the Hager terminals they do look like they should be able to use that but actually they recommend either a PZ2 or a flat uh, one by 5.5 so you oh, you know I don't think it really makes that much difference but technically you're not supposed to use this one so just a little uh, thought there now with this case, it's really nice. Obviously, it's you know good quality and it keeps it protected, keeps everything clean. So it's definitely nice to have the case, and you've got the identification on the front there as well, which is very nice. It is a thousand volt VDE, so you can use it on live terminals if you need to. Not that I would recommend that, of course, because we're not really supposed to work live, but under some circumstances you might need to do that. Or for example, in the rare case that you think it's live. But it actually isn't well at least this vde insulation is protecting you protecting your life um, another nice little feature of this is you've got this hanging hook so you can actually just sort of hang it from something and then have it open hanging like that so you've got access to everything some people still like to hang them off a hook in their van or something like that i personally prefer to keep it closed all the time because that keeps everything nice and clean and every so often I do just give it a wipe over. I do like to clean my tools and keep them in good condition because I think that uh, shows pride in your tools. And if you show pride in your tools, then you show pride in your work, which results in a better quality workmanship.
So let me know what you use as your go-to torque screwdriver. Do you use this set? Do you use the Armeg set? Or is there another set out there that you like to use? I always like to read your comments and hear your suggestions. And let me know what you think about this particular product. As always, I'll leave a link in the description so you know where you can get hold of one of these for yourself. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great videos coming soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.